In the grand halls of scientific memory, few names echo with as much reverence as Albert Einstein. His face adorns dorm rooms and documentaries. His ideas, so we're told, revolutionized our perception of space, time, and our understanding of the very fabric of the cosmos. But what if I told you that the story we've been taught might not be the whole story? The priority debate over the theory of relativity, both special and general, was one of the fiercest intellectual disputes of the 20th century, and at the heart of it lies a profound question. Did Einstein truly deserve the lion's share of credit? Let's begin with special relativity. By the time Einstein published his famous 1905 paper on the electrodynamics of moving bodies, the groundwork had already been laid by others. Chief among them were the Dutch physicist Hendrik Lorentz and the French polymath Henri Poincaré. Lorentz had developed the so-called Lorentz transformations years before Einstein's 1905 paper. These equations describe how time and space contract under motion, exactly the phenomena Einstein's theory rests upon. Meanwhile, Henri Poincaré had published works that not only used Lorentz's equations, but also formulated the principle of relativity in nearly modern terms. In fact, in 1904, Poincaré wrote, The laws of physical phenomena must be in the same for a stationary observer as for one in uniform motion. Sound familiar? Poincaré even speculated on the unification of space and time, and arguably got closer than anyone before Minkowski ever did, yet today their names are often buried beneath the Einsteinian monolith. Even the most iconic equation in physics, E equals mc squared, wasn't actually published by Einstein. Let that sink in. While he derived the concept of mass-energy equivalence, the equation in that exact form was written by others, including Italian industrialist Olinto de Preto in 1903, who proposed it in a scientific journal two years before Einstein's 1905 paper. Lorentz also approached the idea through his work on electromagnetic mass, and yet Einstein's name became synonymous with the equation. The mythology had begun. In the aftermath of these revelations, the debate spilled into the academic elite. Sir Edmund Whitaker, a distinguished British mathematician and historian of science, published a revised edition of his History of the Theories of the Ether and Electricity in 1953. In it, he controversially credited Lorentz and Poincaré with the creation of special relativity, while attributing only a limited contribution to Einstein. Whitaker wasn't some bitter outsider, he was one of the most respected scientific historians of his time. His claim was based on rigorous documentation, not jealousy or iconoclasm. This debate isn't just academic hair splitting, it strikes at the heart of how we tell the story of science. Attribution, who said what and when, matters. It isn't merely about ego, it's about truth, integrity, and the historical record. This isn't the only case where priority had been contested. Take the discovery of hydrogen, for example. Henry Cavendish isolated the element in 1766 and described its properties in great detail, but it was Antoine Lavoisier who gave it the name hydrogen and incorporated it into his revolutionary new chemical nomenclature. Meanwhile, Joseph Priestley working independently also contributed to its identification. Each played a part. Yet for decades, textbooks debated who discovered hydrogen. Science is rarely a one-man show. It's a grand relay of minds across time building, borrowing, and often overlapping. So why then does the Einstein myth persist? Because narratives are powerful. The story of a solitary genius unlocking the secrets of the universe appeals to our imagination, but the truth is messier, more communal, and often more interesting. Einstein was undeniably brilliant. His leap to general relativity linking gravity to space-time curvature was a monumental achievement. But even that relied on the mathematics of David Hilbert, in addition to Bernard Riemann and Marcel Grossman's guidance with tensor calculus. The integrity of science depends not only on discovery, but on the honesty of how we remember. As we look to the future, let's honor the past faithfully and fully, because the truth deserves no less.